Welcome back to Wine and Winds. I'm your host and marine biologist, KP. Now, not only have I spent my career working with marine mammals, but I've also had the opportunity to work with a variety of baby animals as well, like Joey, Taz, Quatsi, and even Chester. Now, everyone knows that juvenile animals are dependent on their mothers to some degree, but not everyone knows that that dependency varies greatly among different species. So today, we're gonna to take a deeper dive to find out why. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you'll be notified when our next deeper dive goes live. There are a lot of factors that play a role in how long a baby animal is dependent on its mother. And one factor is where the animal lies on the food chain. Large apex predators like polar bears can spend years with their mothers learning how to hunt things like seals. On the other hand, seals need to learn how to survive on their own and fast. In fact, harp seals are usually weaned after just 12 days. Typically, the mother just fattens them up and sends them on their way. And this is possible because the mother's milk is so high in fat that the seal pup is usually gaining about five pounds a day. It is also necessary because the longer that that pup stays with the mom, the more vulnerable they both are to attacks from predators. Not all seals are weaned quite this quickly. Harper seals tend to stay with their moms for between four to six weeks which is still pretty fast compared to their cousins, the sea lions and walruses. Because another determining factor in how long an animal is dependent on its mother is the social structure of the species. Seals tend to be pretty solitary animals, whereas sea lions and walruses live in highly social groups. Sea lions are typically weaned after about six months, but they may spend up to a year with their mothers. This is possible because they congregate in large groups, sometimes amongst the thousands. The pups will stay on the beaches or rocky outcrops using the safety in numbers strategy. But they've got nothing on my favorite animal of all time, the walrus. A walrus herd can number between 8,000 and 30,000 individuals. And this leads me to the third factor that determines how long an offspring might stay with their mother, and that is how much they need to learn about surviving in the wild. <coughs> Walruses are extremely gregarious and socially complex. <coughs> calves are usually weaned at around two years old, and male calves will stick with their mothers for another two years after that and female calves may spend their entire lives with their mother's herd. They also have very unique foraging techniques that they'll need to perfect in order to survive on their own. Which brings us to everyone's favorite super floofs, the sea otters. Sea otters have several unique adaptations that require extensive maternal care. First off, they use tools like a rock to crack into items like mussels, clams, and sea urchins. This is a skill that needs to be learned. I've covered sea otters in previous deeper dives. You can find that link right up here. But for now, just know that sea otters must spend about a quarter of their lives grooming that fur coat. And that grooming is not entirely instinctual. Their mothers have to teach them how to take care of their fur coat. And with neonate rescues like Joey or Taz, it falls upon the humans to teach the otters that important skill. I've mentioned that there are several factors that determine how long an animal will stay with its mother. The three we've discussed are where the animal falls in the food chain, the social structure of the species, and the knowledge required to survive out in the wild. 
Now these aren't the only factors, and sometimes it's a combination of several. As we see with whales and dolphins, who are apex predators with very complex social lives and intricate hunting techniques. Killer whales can sometimes stay with their mothers for their entire lives, forming some of the most stable bonds in the animal kingdom. These families, or pods as they're called, are based off of matrilines. They consist of the eldest female, or the matriarch, her sons and daughters, and the descendants of her daughters. Some pods have up to four generations swimming in the same family. Now, I've never personally worked with killer whales, but I did work with one very special false killer whale calf named Chester. Despite this confusing name, false killer whales are a different species entirely. However, researchers believe they are matriarchal as well. With the eldest female leading a pod of 10 to 20 family members. But there's still a lot that's unknown and always more to learn. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about mums and pups. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like and that subscribe button and drop a comment down below about what you'd like to learn on our next deeper dive. Good. Oh, <laughs>